So hello there. Welcome to Fancy Pen Time. Today we will be looking at a pen which is unbelievably fancy. Ah, there it is. Isn't it marvelous? What we have here is a feathered dip pen with a bottle of ink, which apparently is for some reason empty. It also comes with six nibs, and I wonder about the quality of the nibs, and I also wonder how long I can maintain this accent for. And apparently not very long, I give up already. Oh yes, look at this fancy thing. So that's the uh, dip pen holding receptacle device. And now let's look at the dip pen itself. Ooh. And it's got quite a bit of weight to it, really. I tell you what, I wouldn't want to drop this from a tall building because um, it will just sail downwards in this direction. Man, that, that would be terrifying. Anyway, this pattern section here makes the uh, grip quite acceptable, actually. It's not too bad. Now, I believe this dip pen costs about, about $25 or so off Amazon. Um, Australian, that is. Seems to be uh, quite a fair few of them. Can I take the... Uh, there we go. And I can put a calligraphy pen nib in. Oh yes, that worked quite well. Now, I did expect this thing to be more style over substance, but it does actually come with a pretty good quality metal uh, nib holder, so that's pretty good, actually. Now, I'm a bit annoyed that this glass bottle doesn't come with any ink in it. And I can probably see why. I mean, there's no rubber seals or anything on the cap, so I don't know how well it would have survived in transport. But despite that, it's actually a pretty nice little glass bottle, and it's heavily weighted on the bottom. There is a lot of glass in there. So it shouldn't just, you know, spill over and... Oh, no. Oh. The worst thing about a dip pen... How well does the dip pen fit in here? Okay. I wonder if there's any chance of actually damaging the nib as I drop it in a metal tube and it hits the bottom like that. Hmm. Anyway, it's quite a nice object, I must say. It's uh, like the whole thing's made out of metal, except for the feather, of course. This is made out of metal. Lots of, lots of, lots of metal going around, metal and glass, except for this plastic lid. Yeah, I have just noticed that this dip pen nib looks a lot like a regular fountain pen nib. I think it is just a regular fountain pen nib, to be honest. wonder how much ink that would hold. Very shiny underneath. I think if this nib doesn't end up holding enough ink, a long-time viewer actually gave me a uh, pretty good comment. Some good advice. You can rough up the underside of the nib here in the concave section with a bit of sandpaper, and it should hold more ink then. So I might give that a go later. So shall we try and make some art? So that was the last thing I drew with the dip pen. It was okay. It was a cheap $5 dip pen. And by comparison, this thing is a lot fancier. It's uh, a bit over the top, to be honest. It's a bit on the uh, pretentious side, really, I find. Oh, the nib already feels a lot better. Oh, yeah. Anyway, if I find this actual nib holder to be a bit too pretentious for my liking, um, I do have an alternative to use this thing. This is another dip pen holder, one that I have carved myself out of a stick I found. I'm actually quite happy how this thing turned out. I can't say it's perfectly straight or anything, but yet again, who needs a perfectly straight writing implement your hands it's quite comfortable to hold I must say I carve these little notches into here so my fingers can comfortably sit in the grooves I just carve the whole thing with a sharp knife sanded it drilled a hole in the end with a battery drill and then I took out the plastic nib holder from my other dip pen set the five dollar one and I just inserted it in there it needed a uh, an eight millimeter hole yeah, so I might use this later if I find this enormous feathered arrow thing of dart of death to be uh, a bit too clumbersome or... Uh, where's some ink? I need some ink. Okay, we'll start with the ink I got from the $5 dip pen and then we'll try this stuff. Now this stuff should torture this dip pen uh, to the utmost degree because this is just like a mixture of 
every kind of ink. I think it's got like sumi ink in it and platinum carbon black mostly. It's all pigment stuff. Okay, let's start with a dye based ink. Once again, I got ink all over my fingers. That seems to be unavoidable for a dip pen. Every time I use one of these things, and I see, oh yes, I can see why these things went out of fashion and then went back into fashion after they inserted too much fashion onto it, you know. Dip. It's been dipped. Does it work? It works. Yep, okay, it works. Everyone, everyone, applaud. Okay, good. Another pen that works. Amazing. How much drawing can you do with one dip on with this fountain pen? A fair amount, it seems. Pretty happy with that. Excellent. This nib. It has a number five on it. Now, these nibs here hold lots of ink. They've even got little, like, troughs. I've just realized something a bit irritating about this dip pen. Um, if I insert the nib in the wrong orientation, I've got to hold it with the feather sticking into my hand and this great big metal flat section sticking in my hand. It can only be operated in one. It's a bit of a pain. At first I thought this nib was a bit scratchy, but it's actually acceptable because you don't have to press that hard. Okay, next nib, number four. What do these numbers mean? Someone please tell me. Oh, look at all that ink that it holds. It holds so much. There's tons of ink under here, and there's tons of ink on top. There's ink everywhere. Oh, that one feels a lot smoother. If only I was good at calligraphy. Callig calligraphy. Give it a bit of a shake. Back into the bottle. Turn this dip pen into a drip pen. Okay, let's try this nib size. This is the number three nib size. Oh, ink is not flowing. Oh, there we go. Number three. Very thick lines. That one gives off. Okay, here's number two nib. I think as the numbers get smaller, the nib actually gets bigger and wider. Oh my goodness, that just deposited its entire load of ink onto the paper. Okay, I'll give that another go. I'll be, I'll be extra gentle. No. No, it's doing it again. It's just a giant mound of ink. I should have given it a bit of a shake to uh, knock the excess ink off. So this one is the number two. It's out of ink. And here is the number one. Who is number one? It's this one. Oh yes, it's a big one. And it holds a lot of ink. Let's see. And it does the same trick where it deposits all of its ink onto the paper in two seconds. Okay, that is far too inky to be used. A light, slight dip. Give it, give it a bit of a shake off. There we go. Let's try that. No, sorry. Not happy with that. It just deposits enormous amounts of ink onto the paper. I think my favourite nib was either the fountain pen nib or the number four nib. That was They were pretty good. Okay, now it's time to do some drawing with this. So, I will start drawing with the feather pen first, the fancy feather pen. And then, we'll see how long I last with that before this flangey metal part starts to get to me. And then I'm going to use the same nibs and uh, switch to my home carved wooden dip pen holder. So, hello there. This is the drawing part of the video. My favourite part. Yes, the reason why I started trying out every pen in existence to begin with. Uh, yeah, sometimes I think that the tools I use to make art have actually become a distraction from the art itself. And I think this pen is definitely a case of that. It says here on the box, Elegant feather pen set to lighten up your day makes your thoughts fly. But it doesn't actually say where it will make your thoughts fly to, does it now? Certainly not on the paper, I can tell you that much. It's more likely out of my head and straight out the window, where they usually go if I can't write them down fast enough. And it's not the dipping action which is slowing me down, it's more like the, um, it's the ergonomics of the pen. It's definitely, as I mentioned before, a style over substance pen. And for a pen that is got a great big feather attached to it, which usually represents something which is lightweight. This pen is actually one of the heaviest pens I've held, which is why it's so unergonomic, and it has a great big metal flange on the end. 
that metal stylistic plate on the end with that rose in it. Anyway, due to all those problems, I can't hold the thing for very long. Uh, probably about 15 minutes. And then I just have to put it down. Because it's just, I don't know. I've given it a new name, actually. Um, I've given it the name of the Arasionator. Because the whole time I was using it, I could slowly feel my hand just cramping up. And I thought, that's enough. I've endured this 15 minutes. A whole 15 minutes. Yeah, I think if you held this pen for more than 15 minutes, I think the pain and discomfort of holding the pen would actually start to infuse itself into your art or writing. So if you were imagining of uh, writing some romantic letter to someone with this fancy-looking pen, I would not. It's probably more suited to write some kind of angry letter about some problem of your like how these new weaving machines are destroying the textile industry. Anyway, after using that pen, I decided to switch to that home-carved dip pen holder that I made, and that was vastly more comfortable. Yes, that stick I had carved myself, a lot better. Yes, I'm very happy with that dip pen. My DIY dip pen, oh, it's so nice, so nice, oh, so good. I'm holding it right now as, we, as I'm talking. It's nice smooth timber with some notches carved into it. It's got multiple grip positions. So I drew of that for another 45 minutes. Hmm, fantastic. So that's basically, it's basically the, uh, I guess this is a review, isn't it, of this feather dip pen. A stick I carved with a box cutter is more comfortable to hold. That's my conclusion. It doesn't look as good though, that's the whole purpose of this thing, isn't it? It just looks good. Actually, the more I look at that dip pen, this fancy dip pen with the feather in it, the more amusing I find it. I find it very funny. I can see they're trying to pay homage to the quill pen, but the feather has no purpose on this dip pen. It just sticks out the end of this fancy metal part that the real dip pen fits into. Actually, no, I take that back. I've just found a reason uh, why there's feathers here. You can cool yourself down by fanning yourself with it. It's very effective. Fantastic if you get too hot with rage after you're writing your Luddite letter. Another thing you could use this pen for is a hunting dart. It's very heavy. The feather provides excellent direction through the air. Anyway, I've said enough nonsense now. Um, for this drawing, I mostly used my wooden dip pen holder and a size 4 calligraphy nib. I also tried using that uh, fountain pen nib that came with this feather dip pen set. It doesn't hold a lot of ink, but it does hold like one droplet, enough to do one minute of drawing with it before you got to dip it in again. Wasn't too bad. Oh, and I also tried out that hack where you increase the amount of ink a nib can hold by sanding the concave section of it. And unfortunately, the sandpaper I used was a bit too fine, I think. Because it worked so well, and it made the underside of the nib so hydrophilic that it wouldn't let any ink run down the tines at all. It just held onto it the whole time. And I was holding a lot of ink, and I was like, come on, work. I was like, no, not today. This is ridiculous. How can I hold so much ink and not work? So I rubbed some of my finger grease onto it and made it quite hydrophobic. And then it worked too well. And I've ruined my nib anyway. Right, um, if you're gonna try that hack, just uh, be careful. Use some rough sandpaper, but very lightly. You know, just a few scratches. Anyway, I'm running out of things to say, um, so I'll say goodbye. Also, I would like to say thank you to the friend who bought me this pen. Sometimes I don't know why my friends buy me pens at all, because all I ever seem to do with them is just feel myself bagging them on YouTube, I mean. I mean, what kind of a relationship is that? Here's a nice gift. Oh, thank you so much. Oh. oh. This is the worst pen I've ever had. My displeasure of ever beholding. It's not against my memory.